Parametric curves introduce a new parameter t, but they still involve the x and the y coordinates that we are used to. Polar coordinates give a completely different way of locating points on a plane. Suppose we have a point whose location we want to specify. Say that point there. To specify this using polar coordinates, you would do the following. First, Draw a line segment from the origin to the point. That line segment, together with this ray, defines an angle theta. And that angle, together with the length of this line segment, which we'll call R, um, determines the point. So for example, if you have theta equals pi, R equals a two. This specifies a point on the plane. Pi is 180 degrees. So the line segment is this. And you go two units down the line segment. And here is the point corresponding to this data. When we want to specify a point, we still use ordered pairs. But now instead of x, y, we have r theta. So this is the point two comma pi. R and theta are both allowed to be negative. If theta is negative, that's straightforward. We're used to working with negative angles from when we define the trig functions on the unit circle. If we have, say, negative pi over four, that just means we go clockwise instead of counterclockwise. Wise. So here's negative pi over four. And if we have then three comma negative pi over four, well, here's the angle and we count one, two, three, and here's that point. Let's use this same example to see what happens if you have a negative radius. If you have a negative radius, then you extend this line segment in the other direction. And
and you count our units in that other direction. So here is negative three, negative pi over four. An implication of this is that there's more than one way to represent a point using polar coordinates. Let's look at three pi over four and one as our theta and our radius. Three pi over four takes us into the second quadrant and we go a distance of one unit. And this specifies this point in the second quadrant. This point could also be specified as negative one, negative pi over four. Negative pi over four would bring us here. And because we have a negative radius, we'd extend the line segment into the second quadrant and count one unit along it and get to this point. Likewise, this point is one comma 11 pi over four. 11 pi over four brings us here. Eight pi over four is once around the unit circle, followed by a negative, another, sorry, not negative, followed by another three pi over four to bring us here. And then we count one unit this, of course, is a difference from the regular rectangular XY system, where every point can only be represented in one way.